Hello and welcome to another gameplay review on the Vokayu Gameplay Channel and welcome to Split 2 of Season 13. The first season where we have splits. However, the most important thing we have going on here, firstly, is a really hard buffed Shivana and a little bit of a nerfed Rek'Sai, which people are overreacting to. But because we'll focus on both perspectives this game, we'll show you what Rek'Sai should do, given that she just did a dummy, and what Shivana can do with those huge AD ratio buffs, you know, 20% max rank AD ratio buff on that twin byte Q. We're gonna give you an attack speed increase when you use it. We're also going to, uh, you know, increase the cooldown because we have to do that. When they make it so strong that they then increase the cooldown at the same time and it's still a buff, you know the ability is good. The Vokaido GG and Gosu Academy Bootcamp begins on Monday, July 24th. It's only a few more days to sign up. I will be giving away multiple courses to those who do sign up. Myself and Coach Kaibin will be covering absolutely everything there is to know in a completely revised, never before done bootcamp curriculum. And don't worry if you can't make all the sessions, VOD access will be granted as well as VOD access to previous bootcamps as you require. So to give yourself the best chance of climbing through all the new tiers, including the new Platinum and new Emerald, and getting to your peak faster than ever, join the bootcamp by Ghost of Academy, Monday, July 24th. I hope to see you all there. And as we look at the Rexa here on the Wolves, and as you would have seen from the thumbnail, for builds, we want to talk about that, that Trinity Force as well, and that Sterex Gauge. Something I hypothesized with in my private Discord yesterday when we were talking over the patch notes and the builds and things like this. You know, can you still go your Blade of the Rune King and such things? Obviously, there is a AD ratio, in, you know, put in on your E-Flame as well. Because that E-Flame, giving you that 3.5% max HP damage, was nerfed to 3.0. And then instead of just giving her that, uh, as we cross the 237 there, you know, as soon as you give her back that percentage HP to go from 3 to 3.5%, she's just going to become a tanky behemoth that's unkillable once more. Instead, they give it an AD ratio. So across the board, you're looking at attack speed, Steroids on your Q, which benefit from AD. Talking about Trinity Force PTA on hit spikes, with Trinity Force now having more in the first three stacks. Doesn't have a fourth or fifth stack anymore on the Trinity Force, but you have a higher stat base on the first three stats from 18% versus 12% as you had before. Now, the Rex is going to go ahead and do Wolves, Red, Krugs, which I absolutely adore. It's a legacy clear that Roy Demon was doing in like season 9, season 10 already, where you could just kind of Start ISO, not start on the Raptors, which were more difficult to do at the time, you know, no jungle pets and such things, and then go it because you started with Hunter's Machete, you right? And you would just simply go ahead and do the Wolves, do the Red, do the Krugs, and go for a gank. And, you know, when you've had a compromised lane state, like the Rek'Sai here, because of the fact that the Rek'Sai did some weird invade and died, your fullback can very easily be into the Raptors into the mid lane. You could always go to this directly, which is what we want to do, but you can always loop back into this, into this, it allows you a few options, but it also allows you to be a bit hidden away. And it takes away the top side quadrant here from the Shivana, and she will know that the Rex has compromised and might try and look for things. So the clear is still a little bit slow here from the Shivana going glitchless. Uh, the Rex is going to do this into this most likely. All in from the Nautilus, this is what we're watching for the Shivana. Go and have a look, see what we can find out. Now we're looking, we recognize that Blue's available, Wolves are gone, so at this point you know Rex has bottom side. Rex then shows up on the bottom side. We have that information as she arrives. Varus gets a kill into the Kaiser, and we'll chase down and hopefully kill the Nautilus as well. So excellent recovery from the Rek'Sai. Uh, sorry about that. You know, you're not really gonna see those nerfs, by the way, because total AD isn't the same as bonus AD. So while it looks like, oh, they nerfed the flat damage on her E, oh no, they, they gave her a total AD buff, right? So it's actually a, a smidgen. So she's still gonna be giga strong. It's Shivana. That is the very strong one. And now because of this, Rek'Sai knows, all right, look, I can translate gang to the mid lane, try and do some, oh, the tongue lashing just misses. The Shivana knows at this stage, great counter jungling onto the blue and the Grom. Rex is not gonna be too concerned about that. I mean, it's gonna be a problem. We know it's gonna happen, but at the same time, it's like, what can you do? We're snowballing lanes instead. The Shivana's a farming jungler. This is what we do, right? Do not let the actions of your lane as an enemy junglers when they are desperate or there's nothing you can do about it compromise your overall game plan. But we're going to see exactly how strong this champion is going to be. Now, Shivana obviously resets and comes down to the bottom side. We have Ionian Boots Rush. Uh, we're not going for the classical sort of Blade of the Rune King tech, which you can do still. Yeah, we'll see some Stride Breaker, no doubt. Yes, we will still see your Drain Tank kind of stuff, amplifying that Blade of the Rune King Rush into an Iceborne Gauntlet. All these cool things, right? I do think there's a Titanic Hydra tech as well that we could leverage because the Sterex Gauge buff as well, giving it more affordability, increasing the HP by 50. 
That's great for Titanic Hydra, but it's also great for champions like Shivana who want to go in, do damage, a shit ton of it, use those AD ratios hugely, use a percentage max HP damage hugely, and then survive and dominate. And that's why we're going for the Trinity Force into Sterics Gauge attack. Now, technically, Sterics Gauge was nerfed way back when, like two and a half years ago already, to kind of make it more of a later game item rather than a rush item, which accomplished its goals, but now it's like, pfft, well... You've got the great stats, you've got the affordability, and I do more than enough damage with Trinity Force, even though it was nerfed a little bit, it's still a buff for the, the, the stacking on the first three stacks, which we'll look at in terms of damage profile by the end of the game. I'll show you what it says. Okay, we're not quite yet level 6, although we're pretty far ahead of where anyone would normally be in this particular game, <laughs> in any game, really. We're going to set up and follow the Tristana here for a dive. We're not quite able to kill the Varus, who should, in theory, just go back to base. The Talia is going to rotate over. We're going to try and kill that Rek'Sai. Nice pop goes the Weasel. Tom Kench is now in a bit of a precarious situation. The Galio is alive, the middling Galio, by the way. And leaving that Rumble alone, Tristana will die here. We do kill a Rexa. We do get level 6. We don't need to use it. Ah! Hello, Varus. 200. How are you? Not very good because I should have gone back to base and I didn't because I'm a dummy. A big old dummy. Now. What I'm seeing so far, I like. The first clear without the leash was, you know, so-so. Wasn't that quick. I mean, Zyra-esque in a way. Uh, definitely could be improved upon. Most good, known Shivana players will obviously be more fluid at that. But we're seeing players like this as of day one in split two, just spamming Shivana. Like, the win rate looks pretty good at the moment. I think she's going to be a big problem. And I think the most important thing is because of those AD ratios that increase, right, as you max up that Q, you're going to see a lot of interesting tech later on in the game. Now, this is the most important thing here. We currently have uh, two points in W, two points in E. Normally, we used to have this thing where you would just max W to farm it up way back in the day, many, many years ago. And it's been such a common place to uh, <laughs> max E because of the AP focus builds. But... While you're not going to necessarily max that Q up front, which I think is an important thing to discuss here, because we, we talk about that a lot, right? Uh, Rek'Sai invading us now down two levels again. I'm not sure what the Rek'Sai is exactly doing here. You know, you just have to focus on your sequencing, get six, try and do something, pick a lane to win. The, the Rumble's got a huge uh, roaming pressure right now. Okay, I actually just want to see what's going on here, because we're basically crossing in and cutting in to get this Herald pressure, given that the Rek'Sai showed and they have no real vision. Hook hits on the Rumble. We're going to go all in here and get that kill. Hopefully, from the red team's perspective, we don't actually get anything. And Rumble is really, really giga strong at the moment. Shivan is just rinsing this up. Talking about ability maxes. Typically, we would do the E into W into the Q, as has been the way for a while, you know, with the demonics and brace things like this. But as we add that 1% per 100 bonus AD ratio, ah, unlucky. Hello, Tom Kench. Fancy meeting you here. Let's go. We have uh, three points in the W at the moment. We're maxing that one. I'm pretty sure the... Emax was a mistake. I uh, don't really want to be leveling that up uh, necessarily with this particular build, but you're getting an AD ratio buff on your E, on your Flame Breath, right? You're insanely buffing that Q. Now, the first rank of the Q AD ratio is exactly the same, but you start to get that benefit already from the second rank of Q. So, statistically, what we're seeing at the moment is a WQ build doing very, very well, maxing E last. We're seeing a W max into E max basically do okay, but it's the Qmax first that's the interesting one for me because you want to amplify that on the hit as soon as possible and really maximize that damage. You're seeing people kind of focus on that as a level up, but at the same time, then you don't get the same farming pressure that you would by just maxing up W straight up, right? And we obviously scale with the AD on this particular build as well. Well, we scale on the W with the AD as well because it does magic damage, but it scales with bonus AD ratio. So by building AD and spamming your W, you're going to farm very, very quickly, do a lot of burnout damage in any fight. And then by going for the Q second, you're going to maximize those ratios that you just got buffed, so you're going to be quite a potent duelist. I think that, at the moment, I hypothesize that should settle as a kind of better way to go about it with these buffs, if you're going to go an AD focus build with your Trinity Force, Derek Skates, and so on. However, I could see someone going more for a PvP-focused uh, Q... All right, well... Q max, I would say, but at worst, I would probably say go 3W and then max a Q. But now we're kind of fidgeting around a little bit. We do need to, <laughs> as we just witnessed this <laughs> from Shivana's perspective, that's what I'm looking. Because you're like going back to base, you're, you have Trinity Force completed. Right, let's look at this sucker right now, okay? We're going to get this bonus uh, stackage going, and we'll tell you what the bonus 
damage is as, as we go forth into this game. Nice Herald take, nice Dragon take. Okay, pulls it up here. We now have set up pretty well. The Rek'Sai has done a solid job getting a few kills. Stride Break is completed. We see the overpushing Kai'Sa here. Yeah, it's a Kai'Sa that's got ult up two levels up on the Renemy Jungler because of our level one. That's why I don't like these invades. These are absolutely dumb. Absolutely stupid things. If you want to go ward a buff because you have no idea if they're going to go Leashless or not, just ward and go with the laner, like a top laner, ward the red, ward the Raptor pretty deep and then leave. Extricate yourself from danger. Don't don't go die, you know, but the Rex had a solid recovery, but the farming jungler was able to totally dominate and control the tempo. Level nine, good farming. Rexa does go in here. The Rumble Ult will go through. <laughs> oh, that is a dead Rexa. Now look at this. We've got a W burnout going. Remember, scales with AD. So we have magic damage, but it scales with the build we have with the Trinity Force. We have a shit ton of damage coming through from the 3% max HP damage on our Flame Breath. But, oh, but we also have so much damage everywhere else. And the attack speed steroid is so big as well. So while you might... While you might prefer the W max, that's great. Your farming is going to be great, your burnout damage, everything is going to be great. The Q can actually be good to max second because you have the attack speed steroid anyway, which you're benef benefiting from at any phase, right? And while that will scale up as well as you level it, just getting a bonus attack speed steroid from an ability you're maxing second means it has more utility being second versus something like the W, which, you know, okay. And obviously the movement speed here decaying, and, and you're looking at the ratios right there. 20% uh, bonus movement speed. Max rank. So map mobility is huge as well. So basically looking at the data and given what I've used, to, what I, how I, hmm, given how I used to play Shivana, that's probably the way I would go, WQE. Let's see what, what actually uh, this player decides to go for. I have no idea. I have seen a few people doing different things, which is what I'm talking about. The stats sites are giving us a picture about what we people are trying and how it's playing out. And in the VOD scouting, I've seen all combinations of ability maxes, really figuring out where the sweet threshold is with itemization, ability max, and using all of these AD ratio buffs across the board that don't benefit Tank Shivana. That being said, you're still going to benefit from those AD ratios in your E as you level it up, but yeah, I'd be kind of curious to see how the Q plays out. The win rates are suggesting a Q first or second is definitely the best way to go. Um, but I think we've covered that now. So it's about playing around a little bit to see which builds work. And that's my follow-up point. As we're watching this fight here, we're moving to the mid lane here. We're going to channel people, cut them off, make sure we get those kills. We're going to do the most damage here. I want to see that Q on turrets, you know what I mean? And I don't want to wait until the late game to see that Q realized. Does it make sense? Like, that's, if you're going to go this kind of build, boom, over the walls, sucker punched. Kai's is going to ult in as well there. We'll get knocked uh, back a little bit. Won't care. Hit the turret. Rumble's like, uh-oh. There we go. Woof. Tom Kench saves another one from life and death. See, look at this. This, this is what I'm talking about, right? The burnout damage is... Oh, <laughs> see, that's what I want to see. I want to see those Q punches knocking people out. But we have enough damage, right? With this build, with these itemizations, with survivability and the Sterex gauge. Let's add something like a stone plate that allows us to keep doing that DPS, to stack in that Trinity Force and keeping those stacks up, even though the attack speed was also enough, the base attack speed on it, and then give ourselves some survivability and because we don't benefit as much from building tank, and they're really focusing on not... <laughs> oh, that's unlucky. They're, because they're focusing on not allowing Shivana to come back as an AP giga ranged mage, or as a Demonics Embrace drain tank unkillable dot monster, it, we're going to see more of this. So while you can build full damage, and you're welcome to try it, you will inherently have these situations, as you saw here, 3v1, where you're like, oh, I wish I had some survivability because I have enough damage to kill them. I have enough DPS to kill them. I can keep going. I can stick to people with my W now. Maybe I just want to stay alive a little bit so I can actually do the damage. And that's where you would build tanky. Now, can you build classic tank itemization? Yes, but I do like this Derex uh, right here with extra HP, 450. We have here uh, Tilly out of position. This is a good example here. We don't have the alt up. We're going to try and get that up. Timer, please. Fury stack. Fury stack. Hit that. We'll get it. There we go. Hello. Now, of course, there I might look to go unstoppable over that Talia W. I think it would have been good to time your ult over her W, and now you can just kill her. But we chose not to do that. So, unlucky. It is what it is. Finish up this sucker here, and we get 11. Interesting point. Interesting point. As our team are now doing the Herald, look at this. Right? Look at this here. You're seeing that scanning? Can you see that on the screen there? Yes, you can. The passive fury gain goes up. The HP you get goes up. 
the flight damage goes up. So the Shivano is waiting for 11 before using it again to maximize this extra juice, right? Especially the Fury stacking so you can get it up again sooner. At the same time, you don't want to miss an opportunity to get a kill just because you're waiting for that level 11 because you're still going to stack it quick. It's not like you have Kindred Ulti or something like that that's really going to benefit from that scaling. Now, at the same time, remember, you, while you do have uh, Displacement Immunity, it's not quite like a perfect unstoppable spell. Um, uh, it, it is technically unstoppable, you know what I mean? But the, the technical term that I think is on the wiki is Displacement Immunity. As we are, Let's watch this again in real time while I'm not talking. So, we get caught out here and you can see the importance of survivability in this kind of build when you go more squishy. We alter reposition and in an AP focus build, this is a great AoE storm for our Dragon's Flame Breath. But here we can still use that, get max HP damage, we can go back into the fight using our mobility here. And again, while you saw the unstoppable, it, if you're a little bit unsure of if you're able to get over the ability and, uh, you know, actually get that kill, then, then, you know, saving it is great. But when a spell has a channel time, like Talia Rock, you can try and sidestep Flash or beat it. So just putting it into your mind that in that particular case, if you could go and assassinate a priority target or someone who you think needs to die before a huge objective fight, then that's what we want to do, right? And then you would kill the Talia, you could also decide to split this like you don't have to go here to rotate to this you could kill the tilly and then push as hard as hell especially with these 80 focus builds and obviously the downside there is you have to trust your team play the macro play the game states as always but if you decide look i want to wait for 11 get those benefits I'm not going to waste it right now i don't think i could have hit that time in terms of avoidance i would have been knocked back and lost it so i'm just going to keep it get 11 shoved out and do the fight then that's great for you i actually did this before when i smacked the mic up it flew and you know it was it was crazy so I, i'm just gonna just gonna cut that right out of the video so we're looking here at the trinity force 1206 damage this is where the meme was on uh league twitter when they initially did that change and everyone was like well well this is a good rotation before we go to the dragon nice rotation we see the 2v1 we rotate to the 2v1 we have the speed up rex eyes just struggled to get going honestly i thought there was gonna be more to talk about from rex eyes perspective but a lot of it comes down to just over, just stupid moves, really. The champion's still good. The nerfs are not going to ruin your game plan at all. Anyway, you know, League Twitter had this thing where we were stacking this attack damage for um, up, to, up to five times. And then Riot said, hey, what if instead of four damage per stack, we gave you six damage per stack. But instead of five stacks, you had only three stacks. Well, someone was like, well, it's actually a buff. And everyone made fun of the person because, yeah, they were not talking about what we're talking about here. But the fourth and the fifth stack no longer exist. But at the same time, the third stack of the old system was 12, right? Now it's 18%. So that's a 6% buff at the third stack of Trinity Force, but you are capped out at that. So upfront damage proc with PTA and burst procs, thank Viegos as well. I think it's going to be interesting. I don't think you're going to see the, the kind of nerve you're expected to see, but it's definitely going to be less... Uh, it's, it's going to be more useful earlier in the fights and less useful later in the fights. Just because of that. And of course, the attack speed was a direct move. Uh, Kais is going to ult in here. Try guild the Rumble. Who has a stopwatch going? Exhaust, shield, speed, movement. Rexa goes backline, gets nothing. Shivana's just sitting there, stacking, stacking, stacking. Fury, Fury is available. We are going to try hit an E. We're watching this develop. We're looking at this develop and we're going, hmm. I'm only going to go in if I can kill people. See, there you go. That's a perfect example. But of course, she gets stunned at the end of it, which is what she was worried about. But if you can hit that here perfectly, and until they say I had no flash or whatever, then you could be fine. If she has flash up, if she has R up, if she has face rush up, if she has E still up, fine, right? But there you just saw a good example of how it does interact in that particular case. So, now, hmm, team gets caught out in the chokehold and gets all killed up, and we don't like that. So we take all of their camps, we catch this wave, and we shove it, which is what we want to do. The stone plate is going to be huge. The stone plate is also huge against any team comps that have max HP damage. Hello, Rumble, because it allows us to create a shield and create more resistances. So their max HP does less because, you know, percentages and how they work, and it forces them to build more penetration. And it also gives us a big-ass shield to go on top of our Sterex. And I was talking about this, as I said in my past up rundown, just yesterday, saying the Sterex stone plate it's going to be an interesting combination for some champions. Now, in the meantime, your teammates go down mid lane and start dying. You're like, but we don't have Tristana, why are you dying? You look at this fight and you think, right, can I rotate? <laughs> yes. Can I rotate, affect this fight and get the kills? Yes, I can. Hit the minions, hit the minions, hit the minions. Get the Fury stacking. Fury stacking, Fury is available. Scan to see. Can we flank? Can we fly? Can we dive? 
We are wanting to go, but they see us. Unlucky Tristana says, I'm going to go. Shivana's like, oh, I guess I can follow you, I suppose. Uh, we'll just do the smite there. Keep chunking, keep chunking. We got baited into that one a little bit. It's okay because the Rek'Sai's dead and, you know, we'll get a turret for it. But I like the way that Shivana's playing. Measured. Teams are doing overly aggressive things and we're not being baited into it as much. We're looking and we're assessing. That time a little bit we got baited into it, but now you have to remember, yes, it's a 10k gold lead. Yeah, there's 50 odd kills in this game, 50 plus kills, but it's still a Varus, it's still a Talia, it's still a Tom Kent, and it's still a Rumble. One mistake, giving them too many supers, could be a bit of an annoying team comp to face. You know, even though we are a pretty good team comp ourselves. But I do love and I do enjoy this Shivana with these changes. I do think, obviously, it would be more interesting to see a Q second uh, leveling rather than E, but I obviously do understand why people like to go E still. And giving it a bonus AD ratio means it's not necessarily wrong. All the win rates look good so far because they're inflated. I'm interested to see what develops as a meta variant. I just wanted to present all the options, what I'd like to see based on the buffs. Now, as I said, what happens if we get stuck in a chokehold and we overcommit and the whole enemy team flies? You're seeing it, right? Nautilus dies, Kais is flanking, we have no inhibit at this particular stage. Now we're going to ult in here to try do something, but we actually don't hit anything. Uh, we do have the stone plate, we do have the Sterex here. We're going to get W back into the stun. We do obviously have the Sterex popping off. We do have the uh, shield from the Galio as well, plus our stone plate left. Not seeing the AP damage from your E that you normally would, right, historically. Uh, and you're seeing how it's difficult to get into fights, so that's where you would say, okay, well, maybe it's just best to have the E maxed up because it's tougher to get into fights. Yes, at this level it will be, and the majority of you Elos, you're going to have no issue getting into the middle of fights with great angles of approach, and this build, the, the Blade of the Rune King builds, fight breaker. Think about it. I mean, I don't necessarily want to go it at all, <laughs> but I have seen some people do it. And obviously everyone's really experimenting and, and split too, at the beginning and on these buffs. But I feel it's always good to bring you what people are trying and there's, you know, there, yeah, there are meta builds and way to play the, ways to play the champions in the, in the game, but some people just find success in funny little corners of the box of possibilities and they're able to get to high elo and thrive in it as well. So as always, I like to bring those possibilities. Now, macro wise, uh, this dragon is spawning. We have three that is soul. I don't like, you see, this is the thing. You kind of want them to go for this and you can just do this. Because we don't want to give them the coin flip early elder. If something happens, like our team's been showing, it, it could be rough for us. So that's kind of the thing I don't really want to, you know, incentivize or inspire or, uh, you know, create coin flip scenarios over. But if they don't want to do it, if they think we're already on it, then hey, I'll, I mean, I'll take it for free. But you've got to close. Your Rex is just... You know, if that happens, then it is free and you don't need to worry about elder dragon. Which I think is true in this case. Like, we don't need to worry about elder, but... Just speaking to the general population, and also typically master players anyway. You see, look at this. Look at this, look at this, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at it. Look at the go. We're fine. We're fine. We're sticking to targets. We're burning them down. We got the movement speed proc. It's easy. 12, 1, 13. Total damage and trending force at this point. 2,411. So, that looks pretty good to me. Still fine. Uh, you know, I enjoy. Sterex gauge doesn't give us any bonus stats. And uh, still play damage shielded. Um, zero. So, not as useful this game, but definitely something I think in general could be interesting. But don't forget, this champion has always thrived on build versatility, AP, AD tank, drain tank, AP tank. Always had great many ways to play her, and I think it's interesting to discuss how that's going to develop with these changes, which I do like, I did enjoy, and I think it does help her being, you know, like the worst jungler in the game before this patch, so... Thank you very much for watching, hopefully see a lot of you in the bootcamp starting on Monday, link in the description below. Vukayo GG has your courses all accessible from 10 euros now for every single course. That's right. Decide what you want to accomplish in Split 2. Sign up and I'll see you in the private Discord. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I will see you all in the next one.